Say this with me. Say how to get fire. Say it again. Say how to get fire. Say it like you want fire. Say how to get fire. Okay. There is a, there is a formula, if I can say it as such, that is required or a recipe that is required for fire to come. The problem is that many churches has prayer, but they don't have fire. Many witches has more power than Christians. Because how many Christians come to us, oh, this witch has put this curse on me. Well, how about you putting a curse on a witch? The Bible says, suffer a witch not to live. Yes, it's Old Covenant, but I like that part of the Old Covenant. Okay. So when a witch came against us, we did allow her to live, but embarrassingly. And if it's happening this week again, they shall see again God's hand. So, so be ready for persecution this week. Rejoice. Say with me, rejoice. The Bible says rejoice when persecution comes against you, when you're persecuted for His name's sake. Rejoice when they're going to say this week that you are in a cult. Are you guys with me? They're going to do it this week. Rejoice in it. Say, God, I, fa I know this is not a cult, God. They, a, a cult controls your finances. A cult tells you what to do with your finances, tells you whether you are allowed to marry or not, tells you whether you're even allowed to sleep with your wife or not, tells you. Uh, and a cult, by the way, sleep with all the wives, the, the cult leader, okay. A cult has an autocratic leadership style, which we do not have. Yes, we believe that God gives a vision to a head, one headship, but multiplicity of leadership. It's simple. So, so... Um, uh, uh, rejoice because when, once persecution comes, I'll get into a verse right now. I'm getting off track, but before I get there, I want to, I want to just take a moment. I want to speak to you about post, maybe Pastor Kevin and your wife, uh, Pastor Chantel, and your children can maybe just come and stand here. Maybe stand like this and, and, and face the church <laughs> so that I can. So he has many children. He took, <laughs> he took the command uh, literally, okay. Um, but I want to welcome, you know, myself and Pastor Kevin has been in a relationship for uh, many years, uh, many, many, many years. And uh, uh, he had a long journey, very long journey. Uh, he's been faithful and God moved him, you know, from where they started in, where was it, in the Karua? Or was it out? Same thing, I don't know. Oudswaren, <laughs> uh, uh, they started in uh, with a small church running a church there. And uh, then the Lord sent them to, uh, to another church, a very big church, which they ran and they ran TV stations and so on. And from there, uh, they planted a church uh, for the last two years in Somerset West. So, um, uh, and as they planted a church in Somerset West, it was now, how many know when God speaks, God speaks quickly, or especially if He does with us, He speaks quickly. And, um, uh, 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 you know, it was about a few weeks ago, so um, He phoned me and He said to me something that the Lord told Him. And I said to Him, I said to Him, uh, you know, uh, because I'm a prophet, I'll really tell you yes or no whether it is God or not. And I said, this is God, what is what you're saying? And I said, uh, we'll see you tomorrow at this time. And, uh, uh, and, and the decision was made basically where the Lord spoke to them to, um, to hand over that church to encounter. And uh, they believe that they were called to, to something bigger, to be a part of something bigger and to be a part of encounter. Uh, that has been their desire for many years. It was just, say with me, God's timing. You see, there's timing, there's location, there is limitations to the anointing. And uh, there are all these, these uh, ingredients that requires a person to step into destiny. 
So, so when you can be in the wrong location, but in the right timing, you can be in the wrong timing, but in the right location, and it still messes up. You're not in sync with what heaven has for you. So he's got also a bachelor's doctorate. Doctorate, sorry. Um, uh, okay. Um, I'll have a few coming up. So uh, now the Bible says... The Bible says they were uneducated and untrained men. So, uh, 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 you know, um, now Paul was learned. Okay, so, so, but um, yeah, so they said they wanted to join you. And uh, it was a God move. So they moved up last week, um, you know, and uh, they're going to be joining the staff, the team, assisting us, serving you as Centurion and Krugerstorp and the whole Encounter Vision family together with also assisting us tremendously with the partner system. You know, we have a global system of partners, those who are watching right now, uh, which is our broadcast ministry that goes beyond the, the walls of the local church. And uh, so they got, they got a whole brand new future ahead of them, but I think God has a lot for them. I want you to welcome them to the family. Amen. So welcome, Pastor Kevin, Pastor Santel. Welcome, guys. You guys can take your seats. Thank you so much. Bless you. And I want to say that, you know, there's a difference between a hireling and a servant. And people might think, but is this now a hireling? No, no, no. We've been family and friends for how many years? And when somebody says that God says, I must give up what I have to come and serve, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not a hireling. Okay. So that's all I can say to you. Say with me, how to get fire. So um, let's go to Luke 18, verse 1. I'm going to go through a few scriptures very quickly. And I just threw it together here. And I want to get, I'm just threw some thoughts together for this morning because I don't want to be long. Um, Luke 18, verse 1 says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray. Say with me, always pray. And not give up meaning that the moment you start praying, you would want to give up. Let me change a little bit. You never stop praying. You only get released from prayer. You'll catch it later. Ephesians 6 verse 17. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions. Ephesians 6 verse 17, guys. Why are you in the Amplified? Pray. Ephesians 6 verse 17. Where are we now? Next verse, sorry, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplications in the Spirit, being watchful to this end. Say with me, watchful. So prayer causes your eyes to open. Are you guys with me? Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16. Rejoice, say with you, rejoice always. Next verse, let's carry on. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Say with you, pray without ceasing. That means literally pray 24 hours a day. Now how do I pray 24 hours a day? Outside of legalism, and but Leon, we are a grace church. Grace doesn't mean no prayer. It just means that you don't find your right standing with God in your prayer. Are you guys with me? You are righteous, but you have been given a job called prayer, a requirement called prayer. When Jesus says, when the Bible says that I have come to cast fire upon the earth and I am waiting that it may be kindled. I am waiting that it may be stirred up. But what have happened? I have come to cast fire upon the earth. Now every time you would see Jesus do something. Now this is the Son of God. He would withdrew himself to lonely places and begin to pray. 
Are you guys with me? Go to Mark 135. I'm just throwing out verses until we're getting into a little bit of meat and then we're going to pray for, for some that are here. And as I said, I, w I want to, I, I understand that an Easter service can be a bit familiar because we have a lot of visitors coming or a lot of people coming that's just thinking Easter. But uh, Centurion, I want us to watch out for familiarity. Don't let familiarity come in. You know, especially the fact that I said I'll be a more Sunday evening services. Don't let familiarity pull on the gift. You will be amazed what the gift can do for you. But it requires you to pull on the gift. It requires you to be expectant for the gift. What do I mean by pull? You can only place a demand by faith. And you cannot place a demand when there is offense in the heart. You know, even as I, I can sit even and, and, and look, do you know how many people actually have offense in their hearts? Well, I'll deal with this rather than Kruger's door. Even towards a leader, for no reason, we might have never met them. They just offended. They just hate because I did something that I don't even know about. That is how shallow Christians is. And that is why witches has more power. Because they are more dedicated to prayer. They're more dedicated to discipline. A Christian says, oh, it's grace, grace, grace. And they're taking grace out of context. Grace will actually make you work more. I promise you. Because grace will empower you to work from a place of rest where you can do 10 times more than what somebody else is doing. You see, many give under law and you are still under the law because you give a tithe. Grace says give more than a tithe. And the moment I fulfill one part of the law, I have to fulfill the whole law. Are you guys with me? So grace is everything and more. I'm going to get into that just now. So listen to this. Go, go where are we? Mark 1 verse 35. Mark 1 verse 35. Now in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed to a solitary place. Say a solitary place. And he prayed. Luke 5, 16. Luke 5, 16. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness. Say with me, often. This means he did it almost daily. He often withdrew into the wilderness. Actually, in fact, I can prove he did it daily. More than daily. He often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Matthew 14, verse 23. Now, now we see after Jesus taught and healed for very long. Why? Because power was pulled out of him. The Bible says, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. Say with me, alone. This is a moment that Speaking of Jacob, when Jacob was alone at night wrestling with the angel of the Lord. Are you guys with me? Jesus was praying and he was alone there. Mark 6 verse 46. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. And when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountain to pray. Let's carry on. John 6 verse 15. I'm just giving you some. There are many more scriptures. John 6 verse 15. Therefore, when Jesus perceived that they were about to come and take him by force, to make him king. Many of you would say, make me king. <laughs> he departed again to the mountain by himself alone say with me alone so every time when you see prayer you see it alone now i'm going to break a golden cow i know husbands and wives there's this 
image. Maybe the American church has portrayed it. And I think it's wholesome in some degree. But you know, we, 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 get, we get weird. And we say, husbands and wives must spend their devotional time. I don't want to spend my devotional time with my wife. Every time Jesus prayed, He prayed alone. Is there a time you can do family prayer? Yes. But when it comes to intimacy, it is between me and Him alone. Otherwise, intimacy with a multitude of people is called then? Okay. So... This is where uh, this is not the correct doctrine to, to, to be a theologian on. Okay. I'm just telling you that, that people think, and husbands and wives think, they have to sit together and pray together. No. First pray alone. And then they never get there because they got, guess what? They got marriage problems. So they cannot sit together and pray. Pray alone. Then it'll come where maybe the family will pray together and so on. But when it comes by prayer that draws power, you are, now you and your wife can agree. The Bible says agree. So if you agree, it's the power of agreement because two has become one. So, but when you are in prayer of intimacy and you draw power from heaven, or even something else which I'll get into right now. It is you and God alone. Say with me, alone. Jacob was alone. <clears throat> wrestling with the angel of the Lord. Say with me, alone. There are times where solitude is required before God will deposit power into you. Every time before Jesus did a miracle, he prayed. And most of the times after he did miracles, he went and prayed again. What did he do? He had to go and deposit prayer and withdraw prayer. What did he do? He had to go and get reloaded and get refilled with prayer. If Jesus, the Son of God, had to go pray all night to choose disciples, yet we start a business here, we do this, we do that, we do this, we do that. But what about, what about... Uh, 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 if Jesus prayed just to chose 12 and we just do our own will you see many people miss it by the will of God I'm going to get into it tonight further I, want, I don't want you to miss tonight it's going to be a phenomenal service we're going to be ministering a lot but I, I'm going to be finishing the revelation tonight so that you can know how, say with me, how to get fire why is it you see God loves everyone but only his choice soldiers he gives fire to. I'm going to say it again. He loves everyone. But he only gives fire to his choice soldiers. He loves everyone. But he only gives fire or he only sends fire from heaven upon his choice soldiers. Does your prayer carry firepower where you have the ability to pray and fire will fall from heaven? Mm. That if there's a devil in the service or a demon in the service, trust me, Christians don't know the fire. The devil knows the fire. Have your seats, have your seats, have your seats. Uh, where we mark three, let's go mark three or Luke six verse twelve. Did I read Luke six verse twelve? Maybe not. Now it came to those days that he went out to the mountain to pray, and he continued all night in prayer to God. So if you all night, and when it was day, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. 
Do you know how much it would benefit you every morning if you just pray 30 minutes in tongues? Your business will change. Your marriage will change. Finances will change for you. Just 30 minutes. Ah, now you're sitting here, you argue in your head, but have you done it? Every morning, just pray 30 minutes in tongues. Not distracted. If you, if you don't have anything else, sit in your car and pray, but just sit somewhere 30 minutes in meditation and praying in tongues. Because it, go, it moves you from becoming being soulish or carnal to spiritual. Are you guys with me? Praying in the Spirit makes you spiritual. Praying in the Spirit causes power to be in you. The solution, and I will do a big series on tongues because we haven't done one for many years. And I'm going to do a big one coming up soon. I first want to look at something with the New Covenant or maybe we'll do tongues first. We're going to do a big series on tongues to show you the mysteries that comes, the revelation that comes, the link that it has between your spirit and your mind and, the, and everything what tongues does, how it builds you up, how it strengthens your faith. You need faith to do a business deal. The only way that business deal is done, or faith, only way you can get faith for that business deal, you're a Christian. You're going into unbelievers. You pray in the Spirit. You have an advantage that they don't have. You're even placed from an advantaged viewpoint that they don't have. Maybe you don't have the qualifications or the skills they're looking for. You have the favor of God. You can walk in if you know your new I created identity, Christ identity, that you're the 42nd generation, the Christ generation, a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. If you know those things, you can walk into a thing and you can make money like this. You know, money is not the problem. God doesn't stop us from earning money and He doesn't really make us earn money. He gives the blessing to it to, to be it much greater. But we see how people that are unrighteous make more money than most sitting, all sitting here. So what, are we serving the wrong God? Why is it that you work for a boss that owns a company, it's worth maybe 500 million, he's got all his sports cars, he's got his holiday houses, he can take international trips all the time, but you are serving God faithfully. What is going on? Why is it that the church has to be 8,000 big before it has one billionaire in? That is by statistics, by the way. What is going on that the church, I can tell you now what it is. It's a wrong doctrine. And you're an encounter now, thank God, but you were in wrong doctrine for many years. You believed it was God's will for you to be poor or it was maybe this, maybe. And Christians become lazy and we lose a force called fire and passion. We pray, but we don't have fire. Do you know when you're fired, how much business you can do? Do you know how easy it is to make money out there? And I say easy because I'm doing it as well. 
Do you know how easy it is to make money? Easy. Don't get offended now, okay? I just think that when people become Christians, we kind of like, we, we become, I don't know, we get these weird things and we become spiritual and then we begin to justify our state of being and our state or our st financial state on our spirituality. And we don't go out and do the work. Do you know how wealthy you can be? I don't care if you're white or if you're black. Let's leave this thing. It's not a governmental thing. It's not a BEE thing. We are in the kingdom of God. God will bless you. He didn't say, I'll bless you according to this or according to that. No, no, no. He will bless you. But for him to require to bless you, he needs hardworking hands. When he gets hardworking hands, you can, if you know how money works, the thing is, that Christians, you see, when you become a Christian, sin even becomes more. Because now you become legalistic. Many become legalistic. So now greed enters. And when greed enters, money is just no longer there. When greed enters, money will run away from you. Because everything you want is money. But if you seek God. You abide by principles and promises and you know how finances work and what is the purpose. And you know it is not evil, that it is created by God and God doesn't create evil. And if you, if you know all those principles, you can understand, but wait. God is, every person that God used in the Bible, almost everyone, but especially those he used greatly, were wealthy. Why? Because there's something that if you're faithful with earthly riches, you'll be entrusted with heavenly riches. Are you guys with me? So people miss an element. Say with me, fire. So I'm not going to get too much in prayer, but I want to go to, I want to get to the element of prayer, of fire. Because we have prayer, but we don't have fire. Uh, the amount of prayer connected to fire going to God is proportionate to the level of miracles and breakthrough that you will experience I'm not speaking of legalism I'm speaking about your ability to bring something from a natural from a spiritual state into a natural state it doesn't come by light-hearted speaking or positive confession it comes by the avenue of prayer consumed by fire that can make something come from the spiritual into the natural. Psalm, let me, let me read the Psalm 5 is 1 message version. Psalm 5 is 1 message version. I want to be very, very quick. Psalm 5 is 1 message version because I want to pray for you. Psalm 5 is 1 message version. Listen to this. Listen, God. Please pay attention. Now listen how he's speaking to the Lord. He said, God, I need you to pay attention. Can you make sense of these ramblings? The word ramblings there is the same as the phrase in Isaiah where it speaks about the, the stuttering of the lips. Uh, that they will stutter, but there will be no meaning to the word speaking of tongues, actually. Can you make sense of these ramblings? My groans and my cries, which means David prayed... He had a type of tongues. Now, please, I'm not breaking theology here. I'm just explaining to you what the Scripture is saying. And he had groanings, which is your deepest level of prayer. And your deepest level of tongues is groanings that comes out of your spirit, man. He says, King God, I need your help. Every morning, say with me, every morning. You'll hear me at it again. Every morning, I lay out the pieces of my life on your altar. And watch, say with me, watch, for fire to descend. Meaning I watch for fire to fall. Every morning when I lay my life before you, 
when I'm flat on the floor, I lay my life out in pieces. Every morning you'll hear at me, me at it again. Every morning you'll hear me knocking at your door. Every morning you'll hear me knocking, knocking, knocking until I see fire beginning to fall. The thing is that your prayer has not received fire. Say with me, fire power. Say it again, say fire power. Say put fire on my altar. Listen to me, prayer is a conduit of fire. Or prayer is a conduit for fire. Fire cannot come unless prayer is present. Why do some stand up? Because there's something that identifies in their spirits. That connects in their spirits. Why do others not stand up? The fire has not done its work yet. Let me speak to somebody for five minutes and I'll tell you if they have and five, five, not even five minutes and I'll tell you if they have fire. Let me hear somebody pray for five seconds and I'll tell you if they are a man and a woman of prayer or not. I'll hear by the frequency of their voice. If they've touched heaven, I'll see by their eyes. If their eyes have seen the glory of the Lord, how does it come? Every morning, say with me, every morning, I am at it again until fire falls. This is how fire comes. So let's move on from grace. We are not speaking about prayer to be in right standing with God. We are speaking about prayer to bring something from the spiritual into the natural, to make God's hand move. He said, command ye the works of my hands. Let it come out of your mouth. Speak it and command it. Are you guys with me? So the fire, it is to move things from a spiritual state to a solid state. Anything that demands your attention and it is negative, answer is fire. So the, the answer is? So your prayer must contain fire. Your prayer is the conduit for fire, but people can pray without fire. They can pray mere words. Fire is a heart attitude where it says, I will not give up. I will press into heaven. That God, I will, not, I will keep you awake. I will stir you up. I will not leave you alone. I will demand, I will pull, I will pray. I will stir you up until fire comes. Until you anoint my tongue with fire. Because many pray without fire. Many preach without fire. Many teach without fire. They haven't experienced fire. Only a fire has touched you. Can you set somebody else on fire? Fire is contagious. But if it hasn't touched you, you cannot expect to have it. Are you guys with me? People think they understand uh, 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 prayer and they don't. Or they understand fire and they don't. The thing is, God doesn't answer prayer. First of all, the Bible says He already answered it. So it is a matter of receiving, not asking anymore. He says, even before you have prayed, I have heard your prayers. 
The second thing is he answers fire. Because it has to come up like a sweet smelling aroma before his throne from the altar of incense. Are you guys with me? So my prayer has to have fire with the altar of incense to come up like a sweet smelling aroma before his throne. You see, if you lack fire, you have a problem. Revelation, you can still get away with. Lacking the prophetic, you can still get away with to a certain level. But when you lack fire, you can never be taken to a place where God wants you to because fire is for His choice. His choice soldiers, his choice generals. Let's go to Isaiah 6 verse 1. I want to show you something. A prophet with no fire. Meaning you can pray without fire. You can also prophesy without fire. Are you guys with me? Isaiah 6 verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Now Isaiah was the most learned and most intelligent prophet of his time. He was well respected. He was well respected by those that are dignitaries. He was well respected by those who are in high positions. And he had a voice in their life and he was prophesying to them. Above it stood a seraphim, each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. Seraphim is seraphim. Seraphim is seraph, fire. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. And the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of Him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I am undone. But wait, Isaiah, I thought you were a prophet. Now you're saying you're undone because you're seeing fire? Because I am a man of unclean lips, but you are a prophet. So you've been prophesying with unclean lips because your lips were not purged with fire yet. So somebody's prayers that are prayed without fire is unclean lips. It is prayer of an unclean lips. Someone that prophesies without fire is prophesying from unclean lips. It says, for now my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraph, the flyer ones, fiery ones, flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it. And he said, behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. Listen to me. Isaiah was prophesying without fire. But the moment he encountered fire, look what happened. Look how he prophesied. Let's go Isaiah 7 verse 14. Isaiah 7 verse 14, the moment fire touched his lips, he said, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. He's prophesying this. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel and shall call his name Jesus. That's what it actually means. Meaning Isaiah called him to his name. And prophesied him to his name, the Son of God, in the Old Testament. Why? His prophecy was touched by fire. How does fire come? It takes somebody to pray, to be committed to prayer. A prayer of intimacy. A prayer where you are in solitude. A prayer where you are alone. And you can pray and pray and pray until heaven enters walks into your room. So they may fire speak for me. Listen to me, there was a man called John Wells when he prayed that even these walls of his house were tainted with prayer. 
it had a certain color and they, when they tried to wash it, they couldn't wash it off. Because it's spiritual, it's not solid. Are you guys with me? He also prayed where the doctors, when he went to the doctors because he moved, some, he, heard, he felt something move in his chest. And his heart moved from his left side to his right side. When they did the x-rays, you can go check this up. His, heart, his prayer was so intense that his heart decided to move. I don't know if you hear what I'm saying. D.L. Moody had such bad grammar, even in speaking, he couldn't speak. But when they asked him to pray, he could speak perfect English. Because there was an unction which is fire that came upon him. Many Christians, many are lukewarm or backslidden because the unction has lifted from them. And the unction has lifted because of what I'm going to get into tonight. Yes, the fire is the unction, but it has lifted because of what I'm going to get into tonight. And tonight we're going to pray for fire upon all families. This morning we're going to pray as well for something. But tonight we're going to pray for fire on all families. Unction to return. Serve me unction. Christianity will be very boring without an unction. You have whitenized Christianity too much. You have westernized Christianity too much. You know westernizers. They make it prim and proper. It's no more supernatural. There's no more demons. There's no more this. Question this. Question that. Question this. Even if your mouth isn't, your subconscious is. That's why you need to receive another DNA. That we regard no man after the flesh, but after the spirit. That we are spiritual. That is it. And those who are spiritual will be able to understand this. Smith Wigglesworth prayed. And every time he prayed in his church, when he would stand by the pulpit and pray. It says, it's documented that the whole church would run out. Until he finished praying. Because it felt like hell was in the place and being stirred up as he prayed. And when he said amen, they would be able to come back in. But they will not be able to stand within the building. Have you ever been around somebody that when they pray, it feels like you cannot get close to their room? If you haven't, you've never seen a man of prayer. Have you ever prayed where somebody cannot get close to your room? If you haven't, you haven't prayed yet. When you pray... And that is why I say, you know, right now I'm building on a, a separate piece for me at our house. Uh, because I need a place to pray. That is why I'm doing it. But when you pray, you pray alone. Because it is you and the Father. It is you and heaven. And God doesn't want to speak where others can overhear. Because many times when God speaks, He will use your mouth to speak. In prayer. Do you know that? But there's a place that you can press into. It's just that many have veils of religion over them. Many are not interested. Many are not hungry. Imagine I tell you I can give you the key right now to become wealthy, to become rich, to become powerful. Not that those are the things we want to attain from Christianity, but that will be the result. No one will take it. Why not? It's the easiest thing to do. But in the spirit, it is the most dangerous weapon. That is why the enemy is the most fiercest against it. So you will be unable to do it without grace. You'll be unable to do it. 
you'll be unable to do it. It was Yonki Chow. I want to be quickly, I want to be done just now. It was Yonki Chow that was such a man of prayer that the government knew. So there was an airplane, an airport by his prayer mountain that with planes would fly over his mountain. And then eventually they changed the path. The planes don't because they said, they said there was a danger point the planes can crash into that mountain and they had to fly around. But what was happening is subconsciously they knew that there was a man that had a, a 24-hour prayer mountain that there was so much fire going on around there. So much fire going on around there. That a government would know, let's not send our planes past there. Because it's too dangerous to fly over that location. Because prayer creates an altar which creates a physical location. Why do I say get a place to pray? Because it builds an altar in the spirit. That's becoming spiritual to a solid state. When people walk into that place, they'll be able to know you are pray there. Angels will be stationed there. Are you guys with me? I have places in my house where God is. I do deliverance in my room. One person said, I don't ever want to leave this place. I don't ever want to leave this place. It feels like heaven. Another one walks out, says, it's like this portals. It's like angels were all over. Prayer has a residue that it leaves behind. Are you guys with me? The nation where Yom Kippur was, was even so severe with him in the church, they gave him security. That when he goes into the church, that no one touches him. Because God knew the moment somebody touches him, power would be withdrew from him. Because he was a man full of prayer. I don't know if you guys are with me. Alexander Dowie Jr. would stand behind the pulpits and he called himself Elijah. Whether that's right or wrong or a cult, it doesn't really matter. The spirit of prophets in the New Testament is believed that they were able to come back. So many times I will be as bold to say that there can be times when God can place a spirit, I'm not saying the soul, the spirit of a prophet still on the earth today. And this is when, especially when you'll see end time prophets and you'll see it coming, beginning to come forth. But Alexander Dowie Jr. stood and he said he was Elijah and he was preaching at a meeting. Now the man built a whole city and he had so many, so many miracles that he literally thought he was Elijah. Or whether he was saying it by the Spirit or what, it doesn't matter. But newspapers challenged him. And they said, if you say you're Elijah, we are in a town that is in a drought for three years. And no rain has fallen. Pray now for the rains to begin to fall. And while they were still speaking in the meeting, he began to pray. And as he was praying, before he was finished, documented, torrents of rain began to fall. While he told the people to go home and close your doors, they couldn't even get out of the building because the rain was too strong and they were stuck in the building for two days because of the torrents of rain and a storm that came. And then we complain about this situation and we don't have enough money by our job. But you've been given a heavenly license to allow heaven to come into your situation. To cause fire to come into your situation. What have you done with it? 
Witches have done more with it. Satanists have done more with it. Are you guys with me? Say with me, fire. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, have you seen, is not in words, but in power. Say with me, power. Listen to me. We lack power as a church. Why did Jesus withdrew into the wilderness to pray? Yet he was a wealthy man. Very wealthy. At minimum 14 million US dollars. Why did he go into the wilderness to pray? Because... Too many luxuries will make you comfortable. Comfort is the enemy to prayer. When things are going right, we don't need God. When things are going wrong, we need God. Why do you think things are allowed to go wrong in a nation like South Africa? Why do you think there's not one party that God stands for? And I said it from the pulpit. I asked the Lord in prayer, I said, who, who, who do you stand for? In America, you can tell me this one, that one. In the, in the nation of South Africa, he says, no one. That God does not stand with one party in this nation, not one. What is it supposed to be doing to push us to get fire back into prayer? That a nation can be changed and turned around by prayer. Are you guys with me? So he makes his angels flames of fire. Why does God give fire? Because he said, if Lucifer, when I created you, you were defiled by your sanctuaries and the multitude of your iniquities. And then he says this. He says, by therefore I bought fire from your midst. And that fire that I brought out of you will devour you. Meaning I took fire out of you to be poured upon my people. Remember Lucifer was good. She was made up out of fire. Seraph was made up out of fire. Many angels are made up out of the particles of heavenly fire. So that fire that was put, I says, I'm going to give this fire to a people. And by this fire, they will cast you out. And by this fire, you'll be destroyed because you'll be thrown into the lake of fire for all eternity, forevermore. So by the same fire you were created. What? That's why you need fire in your prayer. Are you guys with me? So how do I, how do I get this fire? Or how is the way to make contact with this fire? I'm going to read the psalm again a last time. And I'm closing. Then I want to pray for you. It says, listen God. Psalm 5.1, Messi's version. Please pay attention. Can you make sense of these ramblings? My groans and cries. King God, I need your help. Say with me, every morning. You'll hear me. Now David, Jesus was the son of David. He was greater than Solomon. I don't know if you hear what I'm saying. He is greater than David. If David prayed every morning, Jesus prayed more. He prayed mornings and nights. The Bible says he prayed through the night. But David is saying every morning, you'll hear me at it again. Every morning, I lay out the peace of my life, meaning I'm laying, I'm laying prostrate before you. I give you everything. I confess everything to you. I lay everything on your altar. Serve me on your altar. I take my whole life and I sacrifice it. I take my whole life and I put it upon the altar until I watch. Say with me, until I watch 
for fire to come down, for fire to descend. Meaning, when you pray, it is your life being put on an altar. And when your life is on an altar, God has to answer by fire. King David said, I am watching for fire to fall. Because I pray every morning, I give this. When you pray, say with me, pray. Say, when I pray, fire must fall. Fire must come upon me. In Jesus' name. Stand your feet, stand your feet. I want to pray. We're going to, we're going to tonight, we're going to get into, into uh, um, praying for the family. So we're going to, I'm going to pray for fire. We want to pray for prophesy, minister, pray for the fire of God for every family. Those online, if you're not here this morning, get there tonight. Get here tonight, five o'clock. I'll be here. Don't miss tonight. Whether it rains, whether it does not, whether, whatever happens, get here. I don't even have to do an offering message, but what I want to do is, I mean, I mean I'm going to do an offering message, but what I'm going to do is, we haven't done this in a long time, I promise I will do it. I want to pray for everyone that are tithers in this church, monthly tithers. Be honest. If you're not a tither, don't come forward. Now, we're first going to take up the offering, then after that, we're going to pray for you. If you are not a tither, don't come forward. It is, it is nothing to be ashamed of. Um, it is between you and God. This is a free will offering. Now, the TV show that's going to come out, they might talk about us commanding you to tithe and this and that and us. I don't know what. I don't, I, I don't know what. I, I just can assume what's going to happen. Um, but it's interesting. Isn't it interesting? I find Christianity very fun. Um, you know, it's only South Africa where you try to do something good that they will make it out to be evil. But we need to mature people to know that anything that is persecuted is good. And people that have been persecuted and have become great have respect for those who are being persecuted. And they don't have respect for those who have never been persecuted. I don't have respect for any church has been going for 20 years, I never received persecution, especially in the nation of South Africa. Because if you move in power, you will, the devil hates you. You will be persecuted. They will falsify every word. They're gonna get some victims on. They're gonna probably put them in a shadow or we're gonna see them. I don't, I don't care. I really couldn't care less. This thing has not given me sleepless nights. Even though I say I don't sleep, that is for another reason. This thing hasn't given me sleepless nights. It hasn't raised my blood pressure. I'm excited to kind of like see what's happening. Maybe we're not even on there. Maybe God's hand intervened. Maybe whatever happens, happens. But, uh, you know, it is just one of many, 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 many that is still going to come. Because this was their words to me. When I spoke to them, they said, I asked them, why me? They said, you are all over this nation. And everyone we speak to, we hear about encounter. Now they make it out to be good, eh? So, and we want to see how, and we will make your ministry go so big. We will, get, we will make you glorious. Listen, shut up, devil. There's one person, if God allows, he promotes us. Not media, not you. So, so, um, so, uh, 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 so some people might be afraid and leave the church. And I really hope you don't. I really hope you are, you are diehards. I really hope you are loyal and committed. Because you might run to another church and guess what? Next year they are on the TV show. What then? You're going to run from there again? I'm serious. There was one friend of mine. Like he never wants to take photos with me or never wants to see me with me in public because, you know, I'm too persecuted. And if he's going to be seen with me in public, he's also going to be on a TV show. He's also going to get targeted. Guess what? He's also on the next TV show. <laughs> I said, now, you could have taken all the photos with me. You could have done everything. <laughs> That's not a true friend, by the way. So, 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 um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's true of friendship. 
Uh, Paul says, you were not ashamed of me when I was in chains for the gospel's sake. And because of that, there's a blessing that is coming. So don't worry about these simple things. Listen, that is not, it's not even news. It's somebody that just wants to make money that is initiated by other jealous churches. Can I give you the truth? Initiated by other churches. So please don't think there's some sinister thing going on. No, no, no. These are pastors that doesn't like what's happening at Encounter. They contact all these TV shows. I know it. I have many of their names. I know what they are doing. We leave them. They are doing the work of the kingdom. But they are the ones that's doing it. Some not even five kilometer radius around from here. But God, may God bless them. May God be with them. So never think that this is some type of investigation or anything. This is not an investigation. Nobody has come to our offices. Nobody has investigated us. We have open doors to be investigated. There's nothing. They don't come. They are always trying to do a smear campaign. They did it to Jesus. They called him a con man, a fraud, a madman, out of his mind, a fraudster taking money from the poor. That's what they called him. Going from town to town to town to town. Okay. So, um, do you know the blessing that is contained? Paul says, when you, because you have looked after me, while I'm in chains, there's a greater blessing that comes. When you know that, wait, there is persecuted ground, it means your seed will speak for you. It's scorification, what we call the meaning, the moment you put into a place that is, why do people give to, you know, we are all like, oh, shame, those ministries in China, let's give to them, they're being persecuted. But let one church in South Africa be persecuted. Cult. Every, they're all wrong. No, 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 no. You know, um, we're going to get up what has to be getting up the project that will be soon be revealed. We just, uh, we just just waiting for one or two things to go through. Then it's done. Then we're revealing it all to you. That is going to stand. Nothing is going to stop it. A TV show isn't going to stop it. Um, uh, it is going to stand. God has blessed the ministry and He's still going to bless the ministry. He's going to speak to business people to give certain amounts towards this project. Um, he has already spoken to people uh, that has given certain amounts already. And, um, you know, so we're going to have a visionary meeting soon to those who will give us into the vision, which is a business type meeting, which we'll have. And uh, this thing will stand for the glory of God, which is just one of many because of something that the Lord has shown me for many years. So if you are ready to give right now to the Lord in thankful for the message, maybe it's the time of tithing, offering a seed. If you're on there, you want to give. In this giving, you'll receive a prophet's reward. You will receive, even because of persecution, even because of, uh, 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 say with me, fire on my prayer. Give into the message. Give a seed. Give a special seed. Directly after this, I want to pray quickly for those who are tithers of the church. So as you are giving, I want you to remain standing in front or you can give another. I think they go back in, through there in the middle. Hey? In the middle. Or oh, they come here. Okay, they come here and they go like this. Then as they come, you go like this. Just if you are tithers, stand there and keep please stand in front. And... Uh, uh, even if you stand down the aisles, I'll come. I'm going to come and lay hands on you quickly. And um, so vision fund, guys, I want to say we're not going to take up right now uh, for the sake of time. Please also give into the vision fund after the tithing. When I'm praying for those who are tithing, they'll put up the details for the vision fund for those who are online. And you can give, even if you give into this account, the vision fund, that's also fine. You just put vision. And uh, that is for the project that is coming. That is going to be big. It is going to be glorious in Centurion. Amen. Uh, the place where everything has started. So, um, so give your best seed this morning. Give your best offering, your best tithe this morning. Why am I praying for those that are tithing? Let me just explain for those that are newcomers. It's not because um, 
it's something that is exclusive. No, it's just to say thank you and to bless them. We used to do it once a month many years ago, just to say thank you and to bless them and to say that we acknowledge that they are givers of the church and uh, it is to motivate them as well. So if you're ready to give right now, let's live, lift up our offering, our seat. If you give by your phone, lift up your phone as a contact point, lift up your card. If you're giving by a credit card, in the back there is a credit card system. On the screen is all the details. Those online, let us know if you're giving as well. We're going to pray for you as well. I'll say a prayer online as well for you. Let us know if you're giving. Thank you so much. And uh, we appreciate everything. Father, I pray right now. May the anointing of the Holy Ghost come upon them. May their finances be blessed. May their bank accounts run, run over. May they become the blessing of the Lord. I pray that this seed will cause fire to, call, um, to come upon that altar. Ignite their prayer with fire once again. We give you all the honor, the praise and the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. come to the front and come and give. And then you can stand in front so that we can pray for you. you have to give please come forward just push through and give guys I see the people block people from giving don't understand why just come forward and come and give and they'll direct you I, there's no ushers directing them where to go Marie uh, the people keep going back through here okay so people must go back here come in here to give very simple there's still people coming let's carry on worshiping sorry we haven't done this before guys I don't know where our ushers are in Centurion I need to sort it Raise our hands to the Lord. Let's raise our hands to the Lord. So I want to make it clear, even if you're in the aisles, every keep the keep the offering here if people still gonna give. I did request that last time as well when we're in moments like this. So um, uh, for those we, we're gonna pray for everyone that is committed to tie this to this house. That's all. We're gonna pray and lay hands on you as a blessing. For those who are committed tithers of the house, 
Um, if you are a visitor or so and you're not a committed tither, uh, you don't have to partake. Uh, those who are committed tithers, doesn't mean you have to tithe today. Maybe you tithe last week, but you are a committed tither of, um, of encounter. We want to pray and want to pray a special blessing over you to say thank you for making the work of God. Look, we already planted five churches within seven years out of this building year. Plus, we are going into our next phase year. God has been faithful. God has blessed us. Uh, those online, I want to say thank you for all your giving. And we're going to pray. I'm going to pray for you just before I go after I pray for all of them. I'm going to pray for every single one online as you are giving. Let us know as you are giving. Thank you so much. Let's raise our hands. Father, I pray for each one here right now. May the anointing of the Spirit of God bless them. I pray as I lay my hands upon them. May there be a blessing upon their lives in Jesus' mighty name, like never before. Bless them if they are tithers. May the blessing of Abram come upon them. May the blessing of Melchizedek come upon them. May the blessing of our high priest, Jesus Christ, come upon them. May every blessing and financial blessing that Paul spoke about come upon them. Those who have given generously above the tithe, may it come upon them. I command a blessing from this house that is built by the Lord Himself that is commissioned by you to come upon them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Oh, yeah. 
Amen. Amen. Church, if I can just ask everyone to stand with us. And uh, this is a very important time in the service. I want to ask that nobody move around. And uh, if everyone can just close their eyes and no hands raised. I, I need to make this call. And uh, I want to ask if you are here this morning and you're saying to me that you do not have a relationship with God. You might be here this morning and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Or maybe you have. And you, to be realistic and honest with yourself, you've gone far away from God. If that's you, I want to ask if you can just raise your hand. While every eye is closed and nobody's looking around, I want to ask if that's you. I see those hands going up. I see all those hands going up. If that's you, I want to give you another moment just to raise your hand. I'm not going to call you to the front, but take this step of faith. Respond to this call. Raise your hand. Just keep your hand raised if you raise. I saw those hands going up. This is the best decision you'll make in your life. Amen. Now, if you raise your hand, I want to pray for you, but I want everyone to pray in a prayer of agreement and just say this after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross and rose again. This morning, I make him Lord of my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit and fire in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you responded to that prayer, you can give the Lord a praise offering, everyone. The Bible makes it very clear that all of heaven rejoices at the salvation of the saints. Amen. If you responded to that call and you raised your hand, there will be an usher standing behind you. They just want to pray with you for five minutes. If you are online and you responded as well, you can just comment and say it was me and we have a moderator team. They will assist you and get you connected. But most importantly, make sure you are here tonight. As Prophet Leon said, he's going to be continuing uh, tonight. So be here 5 p.m. We will see you there. God bless you. If you would like to give into this ministry, we have made giving your tithes, seed, or offering as simple and effortless as possible. You can simply log on to EncounterChurch.co.za or LeonDupria.com and click on the Give button. Here we show you the different ways to give. It's so easy. You will find giving options for local or international giving. PayFast is a fast and secure way for South Africans to give. You can give once off or make a recurring donation. Here you will find the Zapper and SnapScan QR codes as a simple and effortless way to scan and give into the ministry. If you prefer to make an electronic transfer, the banking details of our various campuses and the Visionary Fund are also readily available. For giving internationally, Cash App is one of our fast and simple giving platforms. PayPal is another method for quick and easy giving internationally. You can use your PayPal account or you can give straight from your credit card. DonorBox is also available, which accepts a variety of international giving methods. For those who would like to take hands with us and become a part of the incredible work that God is doing, become a friend and partner of Encounter and Leon Dupria. We have many partnership tiers available to suit your preference. Our friends and partners receive exclusive materials from Leon Dupria, as well as private live streams and exclusive events. Thank you for being part of what God is doing.